The Bidens already have a problem in terms of their business entanglements and America's national security interests. But only the Bidens, only they had Hunter Biden, who by the way, by his own admission during this time was also struggling with substance abuse issues, making questionable decisions, right? And so I think was potentially vulnerable to somebody using that relationship to gain access to whatever was available and the, the documents were in the house. President Biden and President Trump, who found some documents at home, and today now, well, former Vice President Mike Pence said, yep, he has some of them too in his Indiana house. A lot to digest today. Eric Eggers is an investigative reporter with the Government Accountability Institute, and he joins us now. So, Eric, uh, were you snooping around Carmel, Indiana today? Did you find anything? It reminds me of that old movie Maverick when everybody gets on the boat and they're supposed to collect all the weapons and at the end, everyone's got a gun. <laughs> Everyone in the federal government apparently has classified documents somewhere in their home. Um, you know, the difference, of course, Rob, and this is such an interesting story, but I think the Mike Pence revelations actually help put the real story in an excellent relief. The real story is that documents were found in numerous places with Joe Biden. The, st the real story is not the fact that Mike Pence stumbled across some documents in the home where he drinks his warm cup of milk at night and reads his Bible, right? <laughs> I don't think anyone's worried about Mike Pence being this great kind of dabbler in international espionage. But people should rightly be concerned, as you noted, about the role of the White House in helping suppress the revelations that there were documents in a home in the possession of then former Vice President Joe Biden that his son Hunter Biden lived in when, by his own admission, he was in business with the, quote, spy chief of China. That's a man, by the way, Patrick Ho, who would later be arrested for bribery and charged with a number of crimes. So, like, Hunter Biden was in business with a criminal who was called the spy chief of China while he was living in a home in which Joe Biden illegally had documents in his home. That's the real story. Everything else is just kind of fun to talk about Mike Pence and documents. I was going to say pretend you're Inspector Clouseau and put a little private investigator <laughs> story on, but you already do that. So tell us where you think this is going to lead. I mean, wh what are we missing here with Biden and where do you think this ends up? Well, where I think what I think we're missing is the fact that now a number of Republicans are saying, wait a minute, we have a couple questions here. Question number one is, why didn't we find out that documents were found in numerous locations connected to Joe Biden, including his Delaware home, until months after the primaries or months after the midterm elections? That's potentially relevant information. It could have mattered politically. It could have mattered in some races. Oh, by the way, it's not the first time information that could have swung an election was suppressed. Let's not forget that information about Hunter Biden's laptop was actively censored by numerous media outlets, including all the big tech platforms. So DOJ and big tech sort of have a habit of kind of keeping information from the American public before elections. So that's problem number one. But I think the good news is that a number of Republicans, in addition to asking those questions, are starting to say, hey, wait a minute. So where else should we be looking? I mean, if we can find documents in Mike Pence's house, where else can we find documents? And if we have concerns about who had access to these documents in the Biden home and in the Biden Penn Center, and if Hunter Biden was living there, then does it not now also open up questions about what does Hunter Biden have access to? I think I saw Ted Cruz earlier today call for an investigation. Let's look at Hunter Biden's business address. Let's look at Hunter Biden's home. The FBI should be searching those for classified documents. If there was concern that Donald Trump, because of his international business entanglements, might have been using access to classified documents to help kind of further his personal fortunes, then why wouldn't we have the same concern about the son of the now president who has a documented history of doing business with not only international businesses, but people who actively try to curry favor so they can leverage their own position against American national security interests. That's a big story, and we should look wherever we can to find out how big of a threat it is. It's, it's kind of true what you said, like, who doesn't have it? I mean, George W. Bush's office today put out a statement saying that they searched the Dallas office of George W. Bush. They found nothing. We haven't heard from Obama. Uh, there are many members of Congress who have had access to documents and secrets. I mean, God, where does this end, actually? I mean, should we be checking everyone's offices and residence right now, including Obama? You know, I hadn't thought about it, Rob, but it's almost like classified documents are the new COVID of 2023. <laughs> Everyone needs a test. <laughs> let's run out and let's inspect every office just to make sure that it doesn't happen. I mean, it does sort of, like, it makes sense on some level, right? The National Archives, there's 
thousands of documents that people have and they take their papers and they go back. You know, so I think, and I think you're the one that's actually pointed out on a previous appearance that I did with you, you know, there's a difference between classified documents and top secret documents. So we want to make sure that we're talking about the right things. And again, no one's raising national security concerns about what Mike Pence had, but absolutely, if this is obviously such a prevalent problem that people can seemingly unwittingly end up with stuff they shouldn't have at the potential risk and threat of America's national security, then why wouldn't we do a search? I think, you know, you're on to a big story here with follow the money. And I think that might be the big difference if these are sort of innocuous documents that nobody really cares about in whoever's possession. But the difference might be, in Biden's case, wait a minute, he's the sitting president. He's dealing with Ukraine and China, and his son is. Isn't that the new bar or is that the standard? It absolutely should be. I mean, what's the difference between George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Mike Pence, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden? Only one of them had a son who was living at the home where the documents were found while doing business with people linked to the top echelons of China's security, which, oh, by the way, five members of the Biden administration, excuse me, uh, members of the Biden family have done no more than five business deals worth up to $31 million with people connected to the Chinese espionage apparatus, right? So the Bidens already have a problem in terms of their business entanglements and America's national security interests. But only the Bidens, only they had Hunter Biden, who, by the way, by his own admission during this time, was also struggling with substance abuse issues, making questionable decisions, right? And so I think was potentially vulnerable to somebody using that relationship to gain access to whatever was available. And the, the documents were in the House. So I think only the Bidens have the same kind of circumstances, the confluence of events that I think raise very troubling questions. And that's why I think you see members of uh, the Senate and the House are saying, hey, wait a minute, what, what else should we be looking at? And can we now not only, if we can't get visitor logs to the Biden home, can we look at other data, including what's in Hunter Biden's current address? Because if his old address had documents, what does he have now? Some big questions to be answered, and obviously this is going to continue to unfold. And methinks you'll be back as this story progresses. Well, you've always been a sharp one, Rob, and I always appreciate coming <laughs> on and talking about the latest developments. Eric, thank you. We, we look forward to having you back on as this story does unfold. Well, Fred Flights has worked deep inside Washington and has also seen how the waves of negative issues can build, especially in a world that is totally in turmoil. So, Fred, you were the chief of staff to the National Security Advisor John Bolton in the Trump administration. You would know about classified documents, secret documents. Why don't you give us a quick overview of the three classifications, the, the classified secret and top secret, and what we would find, what would be an example of what would be in each of those buckets? Well, the, the, it's a pleasure to be here. The documents that are of most concern are the uh, secret compartmented information, top secret information that could involve uh, sources and methods, uh, expensive, hard to replace technical means to collect information, often communications intelligence, or intelligence that comes from a human source that could either put the life of the source at risk or the source would stop cooperating with us if, if the information was revealed. That's what we're talking about at the top secret level. At the secret level, it's less sensitive. It may involve diplomatic communications, uh, candid conversations with the diplomat of another country. We don't want it to be revealed, but uh, you know, the, the, the re and the result could be bad for our foreign policy if it was re revealed, but we're not talking about losing very sensitive, hard to replace sources and methods or putting lives at risk. So give me an example you know, you leave out, obviously, the names in a country or so, but what, give me an example of what something would be, boom, top secret. Well, uh, I mean, the best example would be a communications intercept that we were monitoring the communications of a hostile power. Uh, and it's not the, 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 the actual information that matters, it's the source. The method is so difficult to set up. If one of these reports was compromised, uh, that hostile power will stop using that communication node. It seems kind of weird. I mean, we're in the year 2023. We have shredders. Don't people, like, just get rid of that or put it up in flames so we'll never see it again? <laughs> but why is everything kept, in other words? Well, a lot of information is, is electronic. The presidential daily brief, it's a, a top-secret, sensitive 
intelligence daily that's given to a couple dozen uh, uh, top officials. It's actually handed out on, 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 an, on an iPad, which you know, probably keeps it from being leaked, and the iPad doesn't work after a day, so you, it can't be taken uh, home with you, and that would be a very serious violation. But uh, look, people need to have this material to read. It, it, some of it is quite long. You may want it in paper form so you can mark it up. It, it can't all be electronic. But so everything then, that whole trail, right, texts, emails, worksheets, copies, that's all classified or top secret, and they have to be archived as well? I mean, it's almost like never-ending, right? Well, what people aren't looking at here is that these documents in, in Biden's residence, apparently they include uh, top secret code word or, or compartmented information that's intelligence. But it also includes records. Look, if you work in the executive office of the president where I worked, Vice President, uh, Vice president Biden worked, all your work documents are official records. They have to be turned over to the National Archive. You're not allowed to send box loads of your work documents to your home to use after you leave office. It doesn't matter if they're classified or not. So in the case of the former Vice President Michael Pence, right, he just admitted today that, oh, we have a few in my Indiana home that I didn't even realize. Uh, nobody would have ever found out, right? I mean, if they didn't know they were missing now, it's almost like, who cares? Either just keep them in the box in the basement or, or destroy them. Am I missing something here? Well, I, I give the former vice, pre, former vice President Pence a lot of credit. He did a search out of, uh, uh, out, of, out of a sense of caution. He had attorneys with experience look, looking for classified information to do the search, and he immediately declared to the National Archive and promised not just to cooperate with the federal government to cooperate with Congress. And Biden has not agreed to do that yet. But look, I think Biden broke, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Pence broke the rules also. It appears that his staff may have sent official records to his home. They should not have done that. And if they, if they didn't, I don't care that Pence is a Republican. He shouldn't have done that. What if the originals were actually sent to the archives as they're supposed to, but copies were made uh, because they're writing a book or for whatever reason. That's a no-no too, correct? I think that's why the documents were sent to Biden's house, but I'm worried there could be other reasons. Like Biden may have sent these documents to his home and, and think tank office for business purposes. You can access your official documents with authorization for writing a memoir, but you can't send box loads of your executive, executive office of the president documents for your personal use to write a book without authorization. Well, we're getting to a point in this country, I think many believe that with the billions of documents that are classified, when does it end? It's just exponentially getting worse and worse. And why, like the UFOs, Kennedy assassination, why are those still classified many, many, many years later where the public still can't see them? What purpose? Well, look, I'll give you a better example. Uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un exchanged letters while uh, Trump was in office. I've seen those letters. They're not classified. They're personal notes between two leaders. But the government classified them, and they want them back, and they've accused Trump of some kind of security violation for wanting to keep copies of them. First of all, as president, he could declassify them. But why they were classified in the first place, I don't understand. Are we trying to keep these letters for Kim Jong-un? He's already seen them. Who are they being kept from? Just the American people. So I agree with you that classification really is out of control in this country.